Okay. We've got a huge box here, but I think this is just an example of packaging gone crazy. I think there are only a couple of things in here. I mean, this thing is huge. I'm having to rest it on the keyboard. Four regular size DVDs in a box this huge. I don't even think y'all can see them on the camera. And then everything else is just bear packets. And then we had one other package. There we go. Uh, so we'll of course begin with Boruto. I believe this is set six. This one's just called uh, Mitsuki's Will. Oh look, it says set six right there. <clears throat> hmm. Oh well. I was just trying to see. It doesn't really say six anywhere else. It's um, kind of disturbing. I mean, I guess I can't remember if the other one... No, the other ones had numbers. I don't know what's going on here. All I know is we do have a slipcase for both of them. Oh, okay. Let's put the slipcases there, and then take a look at the back. Under special features, I see storyboards, art gallery, clean opening, clean ending. Some black clover. Feels like there's more than one piece of paper here. So yes, there is. Demon Slayer. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of funny that we have two very similar shonen poses there, huh? And we have a dome looking thing. Seems familiar. Also, I guess this is a little more broken up there than I thought. Maybe it slid up a little bit. I don't know. And then we'll take a look at the Blu-ray version. I guess I'm just doing a weird juggling act here where it looks like same things. Hmm. I see an A there. Hmm. I'm not seeing where it says anything about audio, but whatever. We'll just take a peek. It's the same images, although that's different. mostly thinking that you know, as neat as some of the character designs look, I don't feel a pressing need to keep going forward and seeing more Naruto per se. Anyways, Kochoki. Is this a guy? I think so, but I can't tell if that's the literal breastplate. Hmm. I'm trying to think how many of these characters actually might be girls, because I know they look kind of female, but this kind of could be a guy dressed as a girl sort of drawing, which doesn't leave that one out of the possibility either, but I don't really know if this anime well enough to know if it's supposed to be that. Hmm. Anyways, lots of androgyny on this one. Texas opening, Texas closing, regions A and B, we got an English dub. No. Okay, so this 
I think is that purse. No. Well, obviously, this blonde haired person is the same in both of those. That's pretty straightforward. That could still be female character design, but this person. Is that them or them? This one doesn't have red eyes. This one does, but this one has shorter hair than this one does. And it looks maybe greenish. Which makes me think it's that main character. Uh, again, I think it's a guy. So that pretty much leaves this person as a mystery. Oh, and I guess there's a guy in the background there. Hmm. Oh well. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, yeah. Almost more of the same, but yeah, again, we already took a look at that. I mean, this has more of a resemblance to that, but... Maybe they're the same character and they have a tendency to switch sexes, sort of like Ranma or Maze. Uh, betrayal is its own battlefield? I have absolutely no idea. the wands within. Which is a very intriguing sort of name. Huh. It's definitely a curiosity, especially since apparently we have a llama-headed man there. I see Region A, I see an English dub. Let's play to live. Special features OVA, promotional videos, commercials, text list, opening, ending songs. I have absolutely no idea what to make of this one either. Oh, but it's different underneath the slipcover. This one's even neater. This one kind of gets me a little more curious. <coughs> Don't know if this is any good though, but yeah. I say it's kind of slim pickings this week, just because I'm probably not going to start in the middle of Burrito Six. Uh, I don't know that any of these strike any of these two strike me as something, and this one's obviously in Yasha, and so since I've already watched that. I don't have a strong need to dive back into it right now. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't know what to make of this. But this one, I guess, is the one that's intrigued me the most out of the other thing today. And then last but not least we have Inuyasha uh, Season 1, Set 1. Season review is script writer. Hmm. Anyways, if you're not familiar with Inuyasha, but you are kind of interested enough in anime to watch this, I do. I guess that means you're pretty new to anime, based solely on the fact that this is a pretty notable series. And it's kind of nice, and while it does not quite, um, oh, let's say Yatsura. So, like, Rumiko Takahashi has made a lot of stuff. I think what Rumiko Takahashi tends to be good at is creating scenarios with very strange characters that interest you. I mentioned Rauna before. Um, Lum Invader, I think, was kind of the mascot of anime for a long time, and Ursa Yatsura is actually a pretty neat series. 
Th there's a multitude of reasons why, but this is, uh, I think, Mongo? Story and art by start your collection. Whereas, uh, you know, I, ha I have the full series on DVD. Anyways. I just see that five there, and that scares me. I think that's a studio, because that's disc one, two, three, four, five, and there's Inuyasha and Kagami. Let's see, did I look carefully at the back? So I don't remember how well I remember everybody else's name. Oh, but I think a common problem Rumiko Takahashi has is they create really interesting universes, but they do tend to drag a little bit, I guess. Which is, I think, why Ursa Yetsura works, because something like Inuyasha definitely intrigues you with some of its um, wanting to see story elements progress. And some of that could have just been the implementation, although based on Inuyasha Final Act, yeah, I don't know. The pacing for Inuyasha, I think, feels better, even if it's a bit slow. There's some cyclical nature to it, but it's not as bad as something like Fushigi Yugi, which, while interesting and having its own separate problems, does have the overall problem of can't come to a conclusion, but it keeps thinking it's wanting to try to, but I don't know. Um, Ranma doesn't necessarily have a strong story to it, but the problem is it gets formulaic. Now, it's my understanding that if you get past the formulaic part of it, it actually gets interesting again, but I guess I haven't done that because I was watching it with my brother. And so, like, Ursa Yatsura just kind of doesn't have a purpose, so it's more episode per episode here's the fun thing there's going to be a number of episodes where so and so gets cloned because you know they sometimes i don't know if they forgot that they did that before or if they um just had slightly different variants on it but there were a lot of fun things it meant that it didn't get stagnant stuck in one thing if whenever it kind of felt that way it's like yeah you can do something else anyways Here's this week's anime DVD collection update. So, not a lot um, for my watching this week. Uh, pretty much the first disc, which is eight or nine episodes of um, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift. It's a surprisingly um, fun little series. It's not... I think this one's a little harder to binge watch because there isn't really a... Um, I guess a story... More like, what, what was the name of that character? Hinako or something like that? There was uh, two OVAs exercising with Hinako and sleeping with Hinako or something like that. And it's kind of reminiscent of that. Sometimes it feels less pervy, sometimes more pervy. You know, because that one is about, okay, she's doing exercises, you're doing it with her. She's an attractive person with um, large breasts. So, of course, when she does push-ups, you know, there's intentional bounces. There's camera angles so that you can just feel, um, I guess, some of the, is eroticism the right word? Just some of the um, femaleness of her doing stuff, I guess, if, if you kind of understand. Because I don't know if that's the right word, but whatever. Anyways, um, so this one actually does some stuff similar to that, but it is similar to exercising with Hinako insofar as... Um, you can tell it's taking the exercise concept serious, so there's, um, you know, they cover different things as they go from episode to episode, and there's a loose narrative connecting things together, but for the most part, <clears throat> you know, it shows the characters, sometimes it shows the characters undressing. It's nothing that's, like, completely pornographic, but it is, um, on the par with a whole lot of other, um, stuff that aired somewhere on Japanese television. Um, so, you know, like, covering of body parts and whatnot. Um, and that's the parts when it feels more etchy than um, 
exercising with Hinako, but it also doesn't seem like it always feels the need to do that. So sometimes it's just the girls sitting there and she's making noises, but it's like, oh, well, we like the drawings of these girls with fit tummies or something like that. And, you know, they're doing exercises. And I did comment before on uh, this character, and <clears throat> he's uh, amusing. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, I consider it a fairly grotesque, um, sort of portrayal, just because he's got this super huge body, but this super, super tiny head. Because I guess the idea is he looks like a normal Japanese anime guy, until he flexes his muscles, and then, you know, he, um, inflates really big, like All Might. Not as much as All Might does, but, um, you know, the, the same sort of, thing and usually his clothes explode and he's um, down in his underpants and it's a continuous running gag and it's pretty funny. So it's kind of interesting because on the one hand there's definitely this um, tantalizing of the male sexual interests with the female characters but then they also throw these full screen um, super muscular men on the screen a whole lot. And it's interesting because I'm pretty sure that's not necessarily the physical body that a girl would find attractive. <clears throat> I mean, there's probably going to be some out there. I mean, actually, you know, the um, one furthest in the front is definitely, but, you know, she's a fictional character. So we're talking about real-life girls. And I think there's a little bit less of a visual element to it and a little bit more of a... For, for what girls prefer. There's a little bit more of a <clears throat> kind of presentation, which visual is a part of per se, but I think um, it's not quite like the male reproductive drive, which is looking for signifiers of fertility and the possibility that um, a potential partner is going to be able to um, successfully and easily sire offspring, I guess, for lack of blunt words. And it's weird because at the same time, you know, I've, and I've heard this complaint, and I don't think this complaint is anywhere near, near as true as the people make it, claim it, that this is a male power fantasy, but I'm not sure if this muscle man thing is either, per se. Like, it's, I, I guess I'm having trouble placing exactly what they're supposed to be other than kind of a funny representation, but, yeah. You see, see the thing that's really weird about all this is it's really usually in terms of video games, and this is where the people who are saying, oh no, that's just a male power fantasy are kind of wrong, because it's all about idealization of characters where um you know what are some characters that you would want to see in a male character or female character and i guess a kind of really good example of that and also a really good example of why i think for some people it doesn't make as big of a difference as much as um these activists would like to claim um if you take a look at terminator versus terminator genesis i think that's kind of an example where Terminator Genesis pretty much chooses its Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor based on sexual appeal and idealization as opposed to practicality from a standpoint perspective. And this is something where, you know, I just watch it and roll, and I roll my eyes, especially since they probably shouldn't have had a, you know, slightly round in the right places Mother of Dragons. Um being portrayed as be as a Sarah Connor ready for combat when we already had Lim Linda Hamilton in Terminator 2 um, looking like she could fucking rip a Terminator, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in half or something like that. You know, she looked great in Terminator 2. Terminator 1 and 2 are just great because just the looks of the characters are what you need to have for them, I think. So like Kyle Reese 
you know, especially with his clothing, he just manages to scoundrel, you know, just gather up. The way he kind of moves around, he acts. He feels, I, I, I'm tempted to say street rat-ish, but I don't necessarily know what that term is other than the fact that I picked it up from Aladdin, I guess, and don't really know what I'm talking about. But, you know, he's running around... And you kind of feel like he is running around in a post-apocalyptic future, or from a post-apocalyptic future, where he does have to scurry places and hit-and-run tactics, guerrilla warfare, and he just fucking knows what he's doing. You know, he looks the part, whereas, you know, you go to Kyle Reese and Terminator Genesis, and it's like, where does he find the calories to build those muscles? Because usually muscle building like that is more of a sign of an excess of time and calories so, you know, like, there's a big difference between those, and so you have the ideolation and the reality, and the reality, I think, makes for better storytelling. You feel like, you know, and this is just the first Terminator movie without even going into how awesome Terminator 2 is, but Terminator 2, you know, again, kind of went down the right path with Linda Hamilton and the Sarah Connor character. And, yeah, it's all stuff. So, like, the muscle-bound guy in this one doesn't look like the ideal. He looks a little more comical. So, I'm not quite sure if maybe there's just a disconnect in the way I view these things versus what's this presenting or what. But, I don't know. That's a bunch of thoughts. <clears throat> but, yeah, you know, I've, I've found that it continues to be surprisingly entertaining episode per episode, but... You don't really feel like watching a second episode, per se, after watching one episode, because there's not as much of a semblance of continuity. It seems like the kind of show that's really good for just watching, like, an episode a day, and maybe taking part in the exercise they talk about, because, you know, the show really is kind of serious about its nutritional ideas, its exercising concepts, all that stuff. Um, I know I don't look the part anymore, but, you know, I used to be a pretty avid um, swimmer, and so... I'm familiar with some of the stuff it's already talking about, and just like, yeah, I also kind of know that a lot of the bodybuilding stuff it talks about are things that swimmers deliberately avoid, because you really want to be narrow as a, sl a swimmer, so you don't want these big bulky muscles not only reducing your drag, but also making it where you can't bend your arm as much. You still want, as a swimmer, usually you want a lot of flexibility. I know I don't look flexible anymore, but, you know, that's just a lot of the reality of a lot of stuff and well the way some things have been said kind of make me raise an eyebrow I don't think what they actually said was necessarily wrong like when they're talking about stretching um, they kind of tell you that you shouldn't stretch but you should do something else that's just a different kind of stretch which you know is just a weird way of saying when you're stretching before getting in, you're doing it to just kind of loosen up your muscles. You you should be doing things more like this, getting your muscles ready to start doing stuff and not actually putting pressure on your muscles per se. But, you know, that's stuff. So, what else is there to talk about? I did a trial run of my pasta and, yeah, I definitely don't remember how to do it. I didn't get the thickness, I didn't get the, um flavoring right the, the flavoring was still okay but the problem is you know I'm making a sauce from scratch and the main thing you have to deal with when you're making a tomato based sauce is you have to um, counteract the fact that tomato is actually a pretty intense flavor especially in a sauce or a paste form and you know this uses those as its basis but you know I'll try and record it again this weekend I think and if that works out fine then yeah, then when I have another week where nothing shows up, then I'll do that. But none of this week's stuff has shown up, which means they're probably going to arrive tomorrow and or Thursday, which means I'll probably have them for next week. So this will probably be just a preparation for sometime in the near future. Um, but outside of that, yeah, um, basically my parents' kitchen um, remodeling was finished, and it was... I uh, went up there for a couple of days, and mostly I've just been doing upkeep stuff around here, which doesn't include that stuff, so I still got to catch up on that. So, um, outside of that, uh, I can't think of anything else to update about, 
so yeah, nothing notable video game wise y'all have a nice week